What's up, it's DJ Rick Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be doing um, pretty much the ultimate 1000 SRT Pioneer case build for my boy DJ Ralph, part of Fusion Sound Lighting. By coincidence, I happen to be wearing this polo today and he's <laughs> wearing the new fresh jackets as always. We're gonna be building out a complete, awesome, sick, all built in with mics and everything into a 1000 SRT case. Noel, what are you doing? You supervising? Probably eating some dirt. Let's take a look at everything we're gonna be using and we're gonna be documenting the whole entire process for this. So to start off, this is the old 1000 case. It's just the generic 1000 SRT case over here that Ralph has been rocking. Is it Odyssey or Pro X? That is a Harmon Harmony case. That right there is our 1000 SRT for this build. Awesome controller. Over here though is everything that we're gonna be putting into this. And it's gonna be very similar if you saw the SZ build we did back before. Shout out to NLFX. Quick shout out to my boys at Canal Sound and Light, NLFX Pro, and a variety of other sources, including Amazon, for helping me source a lot of the parts to get this done. They did not sponsor this anyway. We actually paid for everything straight up, but it is very hard logistically right now to get a lot of this stuff, so shout out to them for helping us get a lot of the stuff that we need to get this build done with. So essentially the first part, the main part of this whole entire build, other than the 1000 over there, is the case. Our case is an Odyssey USA. This is an all black 2U slot, so we have 2Us down here to work with. This is a slider case. Um, we couldn't source just the generic one without the slider. We're just gonna remove the slider. It actually helps though, because it'll give us a lot more room inside the case to, with the laptop stand and everything. Uh, speaking of which, this is a flexi mount. Uh, laptop stand. It's very. It's the exact same one we used in the SZ build, but it allows us to put a laptop stand built into it. Coming down over here, we have a variety of cables. NLFX did up all the professional connections we're going to be using. RCA connections, XLR connections running in and out of the case. PowerCon in. Uh, we don't have it, but we're going to be putting in an ADJ power bar into this as well, which has a USB hub. That part is on back order right now. Not a big deal, we just use a generic power strip for the time being. We are gonna be doing a custom mounted plate with all of these port inputs, antenna extenders, antenna combiners for our two Audio-Technica 3000 fourth gens we're gonna be putting into this, and a power cable. And uh, I think that's it other than some small cables like the cable to run from the 1000 to the laptop, power cable for the laptop, and small things like that. So without further ado, we're gonna get started on this build. This is gonna be very quick compared to the previous builds that I've done because we have pre-made already, like NLFX already hooked us up and did all these professional connections. Hit them up, they'll make any custom cable, cable link you need. They're amazing, especially when you're doing custom built case, cases like this. So, so here is inside of the 1000 SRT case. This is the 2U, of course, which basically means we have two slots. So two, basically, universes or slots that you could put down below. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing one slot. It's going to be our two Audio-Technica microphones. And then right below it, we're going to do a half rack so i have a full mounted punch out port right here from gator rack works right now and this basically has punch out slots along the whole way but we're going to cut it in half and we're going to mount it in half of it so that way there's a slot that ralph can put an ipad or something down below as well 1000 is going to mount in here but basically the first thing we're going to be doing is kind of mounting up or seeing where everything is going to lie and fit especially with the laptop stand so that's what we're going to do first and uh we'll get working on that so uh, we unpackaged everything. The first thing I wanted to show you guys is I took these two screws out. This laptop arm has these big bulky kind of plastic plates on it. It really just gets in the way, it's annoying. So literally just unscrew them and they come right off. Like there's two screws for this one. I gotta figure out how to take this one off. I can't really remember. Okay, yeah, the screws are deeper in there. There's a screw there, a screw there. Take these plastic plates off. They're pretty much pointless and it, it, it makes the arm a lot slimmer and easier to fit to the case. So remove all that shit. After a quick trip to the Home Depot, we now have the bolts we need. Now we got all the stuff from Home Depot, let's explain what we're doing. Uh, and we showed it kind of on camera, but we wanted to see where this laptop arm was going to go. Where are we going to mount the laptop? Left side, right side, how's it going to work? Ralph's on the left side, that's my preference as well. And then we're looking at where we're going to mount the mount. So this right here is going to go inside the case somewhere and we're going to mount this physically to the case. The arm can come out if we choose to or not. But mainly we're looking at how far over we want to move it so that where the laptop will sit. This arm does pivot around so you can pivot it 
to different sides. You can move it closer to you. It also can move up and down. We can slide up and down here as well. It's a very universal mount. There's a tightening screw here as well. What we decided on was right here is where we're gonna be mounting this, which means we got to drill through the case. It's the only time we're gonna be drilling in this whole entire thing. These are M6 screws on the bottom. There's three of them. It does have this little plate right here that if you choose to, you can put this on the bottom side of like a desk and screw through it. We're not gonna be doing that. We're just gonna leave it in there as a spacer and we're gonna be doing we're gonna be screwing through but it comes with these longer ones these are too long to go through the case the case is only about a quarter inch depth so what we had to do is run to the hardware store and get some m6 uh, 25 millimeter screws as well as some additional m6 flat washers to help us with the spacing to make sure we get this thing nice snug and into the case first thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna actually be flipping this up we're gonna be measuring and seeing where we're gonna mount it make some marks and drill our hole through the case to mount this up once we get that done we're basically going to start powering through and just doing a lot of screwing cabling and all kinds of stuff like that so there there we go we got the mount hooked up ready to go so right there with the mount in we're good to go so that's the arm it slides it has hydraulics as well which will probably cut some of this foam out over here to help allow for room for this hydraulic to come down but also we can raise this arm up too so we got some working to do we're moving on to mics over here on the workbench so Ralph already has an Audio Technica 3000 4th Gen. We're adding a second one. Each one of these kits comes with a bracket. It comes with a small one and a big one, meant to do just one. So the small will go on one side, and the big one will go on the other side, so you can mount one of these in the unit. But we're doing two, so we had to buy this additional, very expensive, I don't know why this thing costs 30 $40. I can't remember, it's just ridiculous. But this is the bracket that mounts on the bottom here to mount both of these together, so you can fit two in one slot. We're gonna screw all that up and then put it in the rack. So we're all hooked up, ready to put it in the rack, and uh, this one's brand new, so. Oh, you gotta love that sound. We'll hook this up, and then we'll go through how we're gonna do antenna combiners. So, now we move on to wiring up the mics. To do that, we have Sure antenna combiners. Those are passive antenna combiners, so they don't require power. We're gonna upgrade to half-wave antennas. The audio technica is normally have a quarter wave. And we have some um, pole mount adapters that we're gonna mount on the back for our antenna. So we're gonna start on wiring. So whenever you're developing a case, it's a lot of test fitting. It's not like a just knock it out and go. So what we're doing right now is testing out where the laptop's gonna be. So we already got the stand in there. We knew where it was gonna be. We're just looking at now mounting the antennas. I came up with this idea over here. What I did was I cut the foam out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hot glue this section in here and then the antenna is gonna be able to fold down inside. On the other side though, we gotta do some clearing here because we're gonna have a laptop stand. So on this side, the antenna is not gonna fit too well right here. I think there's enough room, but we'll have to do some test fitting on this side. Otherwise, we're gonna have to find another way to mount the antenna probably right here using an L bracket of some sort. I was looking at some brackets here of how we can bend this and mount the antenna here as well. So test fitting and trial and error is the best way to build any case. So we figured it out. I created this little bracket that we will mount the other antenna up with um, wherever we want. Basically took an L bracket and bent it. Um, it is a little crooked, but I will bend that back here in a second and fix it. But that will mount up there for us to mount the other antenna somewhere over here. Because mounting it over there will get into interference with the laptop. You never want to put an antenna right below a laptop screen. It can cause interference. We did put in our Sure passive antenna combiners here. And now we're moving on to our rack plate down here, which is going to house all of these cables right here. So these are all the custom made ones from NLFX with all of our ports. We have RCA left and right. We have XLR left and right. And we have power in for the whole entire booth right here with our Nutrix power con. Over here, we have the Gator rack port mount and we don't need all of these and so that way we have access underneath to put something we're going to cut this right here with an angle iron so that way we only needed six we don't really need six but we're going to utilize five and have a spare so i'm going to cut this off right here and that way this whole slot side over here will all be open to access and use as needed so i'm going to get my angle iron right here fired up Punched out all the centers, punched out the sides. That way we can mount up all of our port stuff and we're gonna get working on that now. But first, the tool bench is getting a little dirty, so we're gonna, we're gonna clean that up a little bit. All right, guys, so this is um, all of the pre-made cables from NLFX. 
we have our XLRs here, which basically they're already ready to go. These will just slide right through and you'll basically put them down in and bolt them up. Same thing goes for the RCAs. The only thing we have to mess with is this right here, which is the power adapter. It's a power con on one end. This is our port. And then we have a plug here to plug in pretty much anything we want. In this case, we're gonna be using a power strip. Eventually it'll be the ADJ um, power bar. But we have to take this apart to be able to slide it through. So what you do is undo these screws right here. All right, so with those two un those screws done, we have to unscrew the front ones here as well. There's three of them. And that'll slide back. And what you'll see is we'll have three screws here. And you might want to take a picture, but um, they're already labeled on here. You'll find labels to some degree. One thing you can know just in general from electrical purposes, um, your gold screw is always your hot, your white screw or your normal stainless screw is always gonna be your white wire. And then on the other side, you got your ground on the bottom. And the beauty of NLFX, they've already gone ahead and crimped these with nice connectors, which makes this a breeze and a half. Pretty much just take the screws out. And again, we have to do this so that it'll slide through the connector. Oh. I thought it was crimped. My correction, they're not crimped. They use these nice little connectors that slide over it. But good thing to do is to put the screw back where it belongs. So that way you know where the wire goes when you put it back together. Put the white screw back, go to the bottom, take this ground one off. We're just basically disconnecting all of the wires from this port or this power block so that way we can slide it through the, pu the plate and we'll be good to go. So I'm gonna slide that off, put that one with that one. The ground one's pretty obvious. It's a little bit different on the bottom. So I'm not gonna bother putting the screw back in just yet. And we'll get the gold one. So take everything off of the wire itself. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna now slip this in to our port. So we're gonna slide that up in there. We're gonna line up our screw ports, just like so. And now we're going to go ahead and screw this in. So to screw the port in, we have um, number four half inch screws. You don't really need half inch, but um, that's what I bought from the store. But number four machine screws, and that's what's gonna allow us to screw in all these. So you need both the screw and the nut to screw them in. And they are a little bit of a pain in the butt to do. Why you wanna do one at a time. Basically just hold your nut on the back side and go down. Before I go any further, I'm gonna put this back together. So the first thing I gotta do is slide this bad boy back on. Or I'm sorry if I'm out of frame, but we're gonna slide those wires back in. This is basically the end connection piece. So slide that back on and now we're gonna connect everything back up to our port here so I kept the white one on so I know where it is white's gonna be our white wire gold's gonna be our black wire and ground's gonna go on the bottom where this little lip is and it says GR on it as well this one does not have a label sometimes these will have labels as to what is hot what is white that sort of thing but this one doesn't have it so we're gonna connect all these wires back up to the port pretty simple Just take your wires make them nice and flat slide them in there get working so All right, with all three of them wired back, again, just keep your wires in the same order as when you took it apart. We're gonna put this sleeve back up, and that's where we're gonna connect these up in, so you might wanna kind of eye it up where these screws go. It only goes on one way. Eye it up, get your screw holes lined up, screw it up in there nice and tight. Now we can put our strain relief on the back side again. This has two parts, put that part there. Put this part here, just lined up correctly. So before we um, install this, just so that we're very much like thorough and if you want to ever test your work, they sell this right here. This is basically an outlet tester. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in here. Basically it plugs into your outlet. And this is a brand new outlet, so it's really tight to get this in here. Um, but basically this is gonna light up. It tells you a series of lights on here, but basically if these two lights light up, it's correct. So the proper way to hook up a power con, this is what's gonna go into the wall. Uh, you wanna hook up the power con before you hook up power. So plug that in. Now we're gonna plug this into the wall over here, which you guys can't see. And right there, that tells you that we have wired this correctly. The ground, the neutral, and the hot are all working properly. So our port connection here is good to go to install into the case. Got the power hooked up, ready to go. Um, next, we're gonna move on to the next ports and the next ones. Uh, Ralph, do you want XLR or do you want RCA next? XLR. In the case, XLR next. So it's pretty straightforward, just literally put the XLR in. Slide it through, bolt it up. This was where it gets a little tricky and it's also why I like to use half inch because I don't know if you guys can see in there, but it is not um, that easy. Well, that right there might have been one of the most time consuming pieces of this whole entire puzzle. But I also wanted to point out, if you don't want to personally do all this, like make this, cut this, all this, you can actually get these racks 
custom made from nlfx.com literally contact them they can make you a custom panel for whatever you need whatever cables whatever lengths they'll take care of taking that apart and whatnot um they can literally do it all so shout out to ben over at nlfx pro they can do all of this it's amazing um i always like to just get them to do the cables for me so i don't have to do the soldering even though you guys have seen i've done it in the past it makes it a million times easier and personally next time i might just have them make my whole entire panel because it saved me a lot of time that was like 20 minutes worth of work to get all that put together that's all done we're going to throw this in the rack and we're going to get really really close to getting this thing done all right so now we got this bolted up what we're going to do is we're going to put a simple power strip in here because again we don't have our adj power bar just yet and uh, we're going to start hooking up all the power for the mics, hooking up our power for the SZ, hooking up our power for the laptop, and just getting everything as clean as we possibly can with the wires, which uh, is a lot of tedious work, so enjoy some time lapse. All right, people, the wiring situation is complete. If you guys saw, I'm not sure we filmed it, but we put the 1000 up here and we plugged it up and then we were able to get our lengths right so we can Velcro in all the cables. All of these cables are gonna plug into the um, back of the 1000 SRT. The power is over here in the corner, laying right down here, beautiful. And then the last thing we need to do is figure out the lengths of our power cable to go up to his MacBook and also the USB cable to go up to the MacBook as well so we can get those Velcroed into the right lengths. And then we're good. We did go ahead and mount up the other antenna right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue this one in the place. I got my Roby hot glue gun over here. Hot glue that one in the place. Might put some dabs of hot glue on this one as well. These will fold down out of the way for transport. Good to go. So I'm gonna do that here in a second. Just like that, we all done. We hot glued in here, so that way you can just easily lift this up, put it down. The other one's on a bracket. So the bracket allows it to be up and down nice and easy. Both the antennas, easily can put them back up, widen them out, put them in the case. Again, right here in the front, we got our ports. Um, yes, we did realize we put in the con power con upside down. In a way though, this is actually better because it's harder to undo. Especially being here, um, Ralph said, it doesn't apply to him, but it applies to me. I'm a very fidgety person. If I have something to do, I'm gonna start messing with it, like a, a port like this. I'm gonna sit here and play with the trigger. If this power con's on the top, I might start flicking it. If I accidentally undo that, that wouldn't be good. That would be ob obviously my fault, but this way, if it's on the bottom, it's harder to pull the trigger. It's harder to undo it, but in a way, it's better because it won't mess up. Over our mics, all logged up, ready to go. Wired into mic one and mic two on this. Good to go. We have our foam here. We actually noticed that early on, if we put a piece of foam up on top of this, just like this, we're gonna be able to put the laptop stand inside of this, which is gonna be dope. So we're gonna test that out here in a second, make sure that all works. But uh, everything's working, everything's good to go. Wired up all of the cables running up to the laptop. Pretty much good to go. For anybody wondering, the RCAs, we ran them to channel four, and that is because that is for um, an aux input. So that way, if we need an aux, you got it on channel four, but the 1000 case build is done. And there's actually quite a bit of room underneath here. Like I'm surprised, like looking down here, you can literally fit something here, paperwork, whatever you want underneath here. And you got a whole slot here too. So the plenty of space to fit the power con cable, fit the mics for in here so that everything stays inside this case and lives inside this case. We're gonna break it all down though, make sure everything fits together, take it back apart, make sure everything works. I'll be good to go. All right, everyone, this is the completed thing. We just took the lid off. Um, what basically happens, and this holds everything together. It's crazy, but this actually, if you put the lid on like this, you might have seen it, but you put the lid on with the ledge here, it'll force this down, and this will actually collapse down into the foam, and it just needs to collapse down a little bit, and that'll apply enough pressure to hold the 1,000 in place. This is foam, so it's not going to damage the 1,000. Don't worry about that. This is going to be perfectly fine. When you take it apart, basically move your foam out of the way. So you'll just have one block of foam and you'll have the top and the main plate that goes in front of here. You take your laptop stand, you pivot it around and out. So if you see that right there, it just pivots along this one post right there. So again, you just pivot it out into position. And this laptop stand will go up, down, it's on hydraulics. Um, and the laptop weight will hold it where it needs to be. 
you can pivot this in, out, around, back, forward. This joint right here again allows it to pivot in even more. So you can get as close as you want, as far away as you want. Um, over here we did this, we cut into the foam and hot glued in one of our two half wave antennas. That way it stays in position. You just rotate it up here, rotate up and out. The other one we fastened a bracket over here, rotate that up and out. Those will go to our passive antenna combiners down below for our two Audio Technica 3000 fourth gens. On the front we have everything pre-wired. We got PowerCon in for all of our power, XLR outs to our speakers, and aux inputs for um, channel four so that Ralph can plug in an iPad or another source. He typically does karaoke, so that is what he'll use that for. We just have a simple power strip back here that plugs everything in. The power strip hooks into the power con. Everything's all pre-wired as you guys saw earlier, and this thing is done. This right here is how you save yourself literally precious time when it comes to setting up at your events. Makes things super quick. I would honestly say this, this will save you anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour depending on how bad your cable management is to be honest. Trying to cable manage and hide all your cables and all that fun stuff and wire all this up. You definitely could wire all this up in like 15 minutes if you wanted to but it's not gonna look anywhere near as clean as this does. It's beautiful, it's clean. And if you guys remember on my previous builds, right here, the SZ case, the good old SZ case, all the ports are on the back of the case. The new style, and this is what Marcellus did just recently in his Rain 1 build, put all of the ports in the front facing you so that the wires just go down and out. And that way from the front side, you just have a clean black front, nothing showing, no ports, no nothing. Nice and clean, very nice presentation wise, looks pretty awesome and uh, that's it. That is the build for the 1000 SRT case for Ralph over there. So like I said, the only thing this thing is missing is an ADJ power bar. And that's so that we can basically have a USB hub in here. We can build into it the sound switch box. Sound switch coming soon. A similar build like this will be coming for me soon on the Rev 7. Excited for that whenever I can get a case for the Rev 7. We'll see. It will definitely be heavier. I can guarantee that because the Rev 7 weighs four times the, this, this bad boy right here. But the Rev 7 is way cooler as we know. Case build. Done. You guys love case builds. Case builds are awesome. You guys, if you have not done any case builds for your own cases, highly recommend it. Some benefits you might not know about case builds, but these ports on the back of your controller, the back of your device, if those ports wear out, that's going to cost you a lot of money to get those fixed. You pre-wire them like this. This is the port that takes all the abuse. That port right there is 15 bucks. Easy fix, easy replace, no hassle. That is one of the benefits of pre-wiring all of your stuff to a port panel like this. You don't have to worry about the wear and tear on the ports on your actual device, which can get bad over time. But there you guys go. That's the build. Hope you guys liked it. Ralph, anything? FSL for life. <laughs> FSL for life, baby. We got plenty of events coming. Ralph is, uh, if you guys didn't know, Ralph's the newest DJ on the Fusion Sound Lighting team. You have, at the, this point, this is February of 2021, but I think you have like 25 events on the books right now for 2020 20, or 2022. Ralph's gonna have probably 40 events by the time this, this year's over. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe. There'll be a link to everything I used in this video if I can find it in the description down below. Check out Canal Sound and Light that helped with sourcing all the stuff. Check out NLFX Pro for details on all of the ports and the custom made cables that they make. Shout out to them. Um, again, they're not sponsoring the video. They're just dope homies that help me get all this stuff that I need to make these awesome case builds. So anyways guys, peace out. We'll see you in the next one. Hi.